Guys, I'm so sorry. We had some kind of technical difficulties. I don't know what the fuck. Fucking internet, fucking StreamYard, fucking everything. I apologize. Um, uh, I'm going to tell everybody to move on over here. If anybody's waiting in the other room, I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, I do apologize for that. I think I might have closed it. Okay, I think I closed it. So hopefully everybody will know to come on over here. I do apologize. I don't know what the hell. Anyway. Fuck. Terrible. I, I hate when things go badly. And you know what? Today was a good goddamn day. Today a lot of amazing things happened, which we'll find out about soon. I'll tell you guys real, real soon. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but I've got some amazing guests lined up. Uh, and, um, well... Uh, boy, uh, may, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give you a couple hints as we go. Let me put the link here because I had it in the other one. Uh, in the chat, you'll see the link to the Kino Lorber sale. Um, uh, it's hard to find. You can't just go to the website and find it, which sucks. A lot of people have been having trouble uh, tracking it down, but, but that is the, that is the, um, it's the situation, uh, as it were. The link is. Uh, there in the chat. It's also in the description. All right. Okay. Fuck, you know what? We all need some good news. I'll tell you some good news right up front. Uh, David Gregory has just confirmed with me he'll be on Holly Weird Friday. Uh, we'll be, uh, the schedule will be off. You know, it won't be the actual, the typical Holly Weird time, sort of towards the evening, you know, uh, late, early evening, late evening, depending on your time. Um, it will be sometime in. Uh, in the morning, well, actually, it'll be the morning for me, Los Angeles time. So it'll be 10 a.m., around 10 a.m. on Friday morning, uh, around 1 p.m. EST. And it's 6 p.m. in the UK. And that's where, uh, that's where David Gregory is currently. So that's why we're, that's, that's why the scheduling is a little strange because he's making time for us. And uh, um, he's over there across the pond, as it were. So uh, David Gregory here Friday, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna pick his brain about Severin. We're gonna find out all about the sale. Uh, go hopefully beyond the podcast and and, and figure out more um, about the titles in store. Maybe he can drop a couple hints. He probably won't, but we'll see. We can try. We can always try. We'll see what happens. Uh, David Gregory will be here. Then Saturday, uh, I'm announcing it now. I haven't put up the sign yet. But we've got Mark Savage, the director of The Masturbating Gunman. That's right. That movie that everyone took a second look and go, wait, wait, what is it called? Well, we're going to have the director here Saturday uh, at our Let's Watch party uh, uh, around, uh, I think he's coming in. What did he say? I I've talked to so many people, so there's so many different changes in scheduling, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the exact time for you um, because I, I think you should know because I want you to be there. Um, okay, so he's gonna be here 5 p.m. PST. So what we'll do is we'll do the regular. Let's watch at 3 p.m. Uh, we're gonna be watching Endgame, which is uh, one of the seven releases. We'll watch that at the end of that movie. Mark will join us just like we had Brad Henderson join us during the Vinegar Syndrome show. And we'll talk Masturbating Gunman and his work with Severin. So I hope you'll join us for that. That's going to be a fun uh, interview as well. So I got a whole a whole weekend of fun planned for you guys, Severin, uh, Severin related, uh, especially uh, Sunday. I think it's going to be great. We have a, we have an aftermath live. Be joined by a panel of YouTubers. Uh, most notably, my buddy Aaron Pin, my buddy Tony uh, of the Dead, uh, uh, Ethan from Seymour Movies. And um, gosh, who else is oh gosh, who else is joining us? Oh, Leon from uh, Undead Nightmare Twenty Four. He'll be here. Maybe somebody else. And we'll be talking aftermath sale and what we got and what we liked and what we didn't like. That kind of stuff. Uh, that's going to be Sunday. I'm also going to be on Aaron's live tomorrow. I believe it's five p.m. PST. Uh, yeah, five p.m. PST uh, on, on Aaron's channel, uh, Mr. Colt of. Cult of Cinema, right? Yeah, sorry, get confused. Anyway, hey, welcome to everybody who's joining me. I'm so sorry about the the issues with the original stream. I don't know what the fuck happened. Issues with Wi-Fi and StreamYard and everything just kind of took a shit on me and I had to restart it, so I apologize for that. The joys of life. Uh, checking in with everybody. Just Dave, hey man, good to see you. Ron, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, good to see you. 
Um, okay, let's dive in. The June Swoon Sale. <clears throat> the June Swoon. June Swoon Sale 2021 has happened. Dirty Cats is here. Hey, Dirty Cats. What's up? What's up? Uh, Brian, yo, back at you. Back at you, sir. Uh, by the way, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you do, you'll be my best friend. Everybody here is my best friend. I don't consider you guys subscribers. I consider you pals. Uh, and I mean that. I really do. Uh, I, I, to me, you guys are family and, and I like to help you guys save money. So drop a like, do, do that real quick. Drop a like on this new video. So, so YouTube knows that this is in play. Um, and, um, let's get into the sale. Subscribe if you're new. I'm trying to get to 1500 subs. If I do that by July 5th, oh my God. Oh man. I'm already planning it. A, a 12 hour movie marathon here live on the channel. Oh my god, I've already got the movies listed, so I'm I'm going to enjoy that. Uh Ron chiming in. I need to pick up the Night Stalker, the Night Strangler, and a few of the Eastwood titles. Uh yes. Uh, now's your chance. I do I, I will warn you about Night Stalker and Night Strangler. There is a massive let me close this window so I don't see too many things. There is a massive box set coming out for October. Uh and that includes the movies uh, and the TV show. So I I would wait. If I were you, uh, I mean, unless you have the TV show, but I that that's that's just my feeling on it. Let me actually, you know, it'll be good. I'll put chat over here, and I can go like this, and then I can look at people's responses. Perfect. <clears throat> here we go. June Swoon. Hundred rifles. You got a western here. Um, a pseudo pseudo spaghetti western. Uh, four. I mean, the prices are amazing. Nine bucks. I mean, a. <laughs> MSRP is nuts. Like a Jami, I've never heard of this, but MSRP is $35. What the hell? Not for me. Not for me, man. Um, Brian says, already spent 350 on this sale. Clear out a good bit of my wish list. Excellent. Good job, man. Ron says, okay, I didn't know about that. Thanks for the heads up. Oh, no worries, man. That's what I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Iron Eagles 3 is $649 on Blu-ray. I do not remember that one very well. Didn't he die? Is that, is that supposed to be a prequel? I thought Chappie died. Um, here's one that I think I might pick up. I love this cast, and for some reason, I don't have this movie. You know what? I think every every Kino sale, I'm, it's always in my list, and I always move it out of my list. I'm grabbing it. I'm, I'm adding that to cart right now. Uh, I love that cast. And directed by Gene Wilder. I mean, you cannot go wrong with that. Uh, Adventures of Captain Marvel. That's interesting, but I'm I'm kind of done with materials. I love them, but uh, I'm kind of done. Peter Sellers, Victoria De Sica. Holy shit! What? What? That's kind of awesome. Watch your girl guard your gold. Hold your jewels. They mean balls. What the hell? Hold on a minute. This wildly funny farce gives the comedy genius Peter Sellers free reign as he assumes several wacky personalities, each one funnier than the last. Directed by the amazing Vittorio De Sica, which we, we've been talking about him recently because he's in Blood for Dracula. Um, written by Neil Simon. Oh, yeah. I'll grab that shit. That sounds awesome. That's what I love about Kino. They have so many titles, stuff I've never heard of, but they're all like solid-ass movies. <clears throat> the All Nighter, um, directed by Susanna Huff's husband, I believe. Uh, I think I'll pass on that one. Let's see, Amazon Women on the Moon. I eleven bucks is a little high. I love this movie, man. When I was a kid, oh man, there's there's like a lot of there's a lot of good nudity in this film. Um, do I need this? Do I need this? I don't know. It is really good. It's eleven bucks though. I think I can wait till it's nine dollars. I'll wait till it's nine nine bucks. Everything gets nine. Everything gets nine, as they say. Ron says the beautiful blonde from Bashful Band is a no-brainer for five ninety nine. Trying to get everything from Preston Sturges. Oh, nice. Uh, um, did I pass that? I didn't see that. Uh, we'll come across it. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Boris Karloff's The Ape. I mean, ten bucks. Uh, that's too much for that. I almost want to get Ape. I saw that reviewed by um, Red Letter Media, but it doesn't look like a good movie, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass. Atomic Cafe. Um, 
no, I think I'll pass on that one. Bakurao, that's one of the first movies I reviewed on this channel. It's okay. I didn't love it. But it's, uh, of course, and with my taste, it turns out to be Oscar nominated. Uh, Battleship Potemkin, every filmmaker needs to see this movie. It is excellent. One of the classics. Uh, you know, editing, people talk about his editing, and it's, there's a reason why that movie's important. Hey, Tom in the house. Hey, Tom. Put in a 20 Blu-ray order. Nice. Good for you. That's a healthy one. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go that hard, but uh, I'll see. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm always surprised. I'm always uh, I'm pretty surprised. Billy Two Hats with Gregory Peck and Desi Arnaz. What? Does Desi Arnaz play an Indian? Because that's what you would cast him at, as, I should say. By the way, did you guys hear? This is kind of sad. Did you guys hear what happened to poor uh, Eddie Deason? Oh, man. I don't know if you guys want me to go into it, but it's, some Eddie Deason drama just dropped, and it's really awful. Um, it's really awful. Uh, Joan Collins, the bitch. She's a woman who always gets what she wants. They call her the bitch. Um, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't need that one. Uh, Black Gravel, I hear, is good. It's kind of like... Um... Oh, wait. That's not the... That's not what I... What? Cold War? I thought it was... Um... I thought it was like a noir film. Uh, Hard-boiled cinema. Uh, 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 Post-war economic hardship. Mm, nah. I was thinking of something else, I think. Black Magic Rights, directed by Renato? No. Who's the director? What's his name? Renato Pulselli. Uh, right. Oh, Pulselli. There you go. It was easier to read over here. Robbie in the house. Severin Kino and Reggie Shaw Factory. There goes my wallet. Yeah, Shaw Factory has not even announced when their sale is, but it's it should be soon. It's normally June. And and uh, you forgot to mention uh, Criterion. That's right around the freaking corner. Blast Fighter 1249. That is a hell of a movie. Highly recommend that. That's a fun, fun, fun movie. Fun, fun, fun. That's, that's my number one recommendation right now. Uh, Blue Collar. I'm on the fence about it. I hear it's okay, but... Um, well, maybe I'll come back to it. What happened to Eddie? Hopefully it's not related to his health. No, no. I think he just kind of shit on his brand. Um, uh, uh, it's completely unrelated, but I'll show you because I think uh, since we had since we had Eddie on, I think we should I think we should address it. Um, it's pretty awful. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. Can I just click on? Um, I don't know. It's up to you guys. Uh, it's up to you guys. I can talk about it, but it does kind of go off the page uh, of what we're doing. Isn't this Kino's fifth sale this year? Probably. Um, God bless them. God bless them. Every one of them. Um, I, I love a good sale. I love a good sale. Mike in the house. I only pick up Westerns. You know, me too. I, I and honestly, I don't know how you feel about it, Mike, but I love spaghetti westerns. That's kind of where my blood is. That's the shit I love, man. The Boba Fett's just subbed to the channel for Baby Herman's recommendations. Picked up. Thank you so much, by the way. I 100% appreciate that. Uh, picked up Black Sunday, Cool as Ice, Rawhead Rex. Oh, Rawhead Rex, nice. Mad Max 4K and Link. Oh, Link is a good ass movie, man. Good, uh, good picks. And welcome to the party. Official welcome to the party. Anyone who tells me they've subscribed, um, I, even if it's a comment, you get an official welcome to the party, Boba Fett. I mean, obviously, I'll change the name to who, who is <laughs> who's contacting me, but you know what I mean. Uh, Churchill, City of Women. That looks like a Fellini porn festival, which is not City of Women. What is City of Women? That's not in the box set. Uh, 1980 Fantasia introduced the start of the Maestro's delirious late period. A surrealist tour de force filmed on sound stages and locations alike, overflowing the same century invention found in classic movie musicals. Uh, Fellini's alter ego in a semi reprise of Eight and a Half. 
Uh, Women have taken over. Ah, no, I think I'll pass. I think I'll pass. I think I'll pass. We'll we'll talk about Eddie Deason towards the end. You guys are not going to believe. It's awful. I feel really bad about it. I mean, I'm not even responsible, but it's just, it's a bad, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Donald Sutherland in a movie called Crackers, directed by Louis Maul. Wow. Man, so many fucking movies, man. You, who, cares, you, who cares how many movies you've seen? You've never seen every movie, man. There's no way. And I love that. That's the magic of movies. That's cinema, man. You will never see every movie. Here's Cool as Ice, uh, 12 bucks. That's about right. A little more than, I, I don't think I need to own it, but um, that's about right. Date with an Angel is a really great movie. I really enjoyed that film. Really enjoyed that movie. Uh, Death in the Garden. That's a Luis Buñuel film. Uh, I, I haven't seen it, but um, maybe it's, um, maybe. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. Um, Desecration, Dante Tomaselli. I'm not a big fan of Dante Tomaselli's uh, films. Uh, yeah, not a big fan. Video store, welcome. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, indeed. Are you excited for the severance sale? I'm curious. Uh, let me know. Robbie says, Kilo usually puts out really good westerns, good crime films. Yeah, a, a tons of noir. Tons of noir and some really good 80s stuff that I remember from back in the day that nobody uh, really talks about. Well, hopefully we'll run into some, and I'll, I'll point those out as we go. Uh, Kino is really good. I Kino, Kino has always been one of my favorite labels. Uh, it would be Criterion, I guess Kino, and then and then it would be uh, Vinegar Syndrome, Warner Archive, and Seven. Seven is kind of dropped for me, uh, only because their stuff is so minute you know it, it's definitely a of of a piece you it, it speaks to a certain um fandom and and so not all the stuff they put out is something i love i mean there's probably amazing movies here that i'm glossing over oh dynasty i, I somebody recommended this to me and i'm gonna get it it contains 3d i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get this 3d Kung Fu Extravaganza. Sorry about this. I don't. Um, hold on one second. Check. Blues. My wife's asking where it is uh, on, on Blu-ray. I, I, I could find it if I, if I had time, but I don't know where it is. Uh, do seven ship to the UK? I'll pick up a few, including Peanut Butter Solution. They do ship to the UK. They absolutely do. Um, but shipping is going to be fucking expensive. Hey, Baby Herman, what are your thoughts on Arrow Video? Uh, Baby Herman, by the way, thank you so much for recommending the channel to people. I really appreciate that, man. That's that's amazing. I, I hope, uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. I really appreciate you getting the word out. I love Arrow Video. It's amazing. Uh, uh, I, that's, a, that's one I forgot. Holy shit. Okay, we'll, we'll redo the list. Criterion, Arrow, Kino, yeah, I think Arrow's right up there. It's one of my, it's one of my favorites. They, they put out pretty much everything I like: um, the Vengeance trilogy, uh, um, the Battle Royale, the Argento stuff. I'm a big fan. Um, I also love Louise Brooks. I think she is just a striking woman. And I don't have this movie. I've seen it tons of times. But it's also such a hard watch too. It's not a it's not a happy time movie. Uh, yeah, life is hard enough. Uh, here's a western. Let's take a look at this. Duel in the Sun, King Vidor. Great cast. Jennifer Jones, Gregory Peck, Joseph Cotton, and anything is just awesome. He is so good, so fucking good. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. What's Eagle's Wings? That looks crazy as shit. I don't even know what's going on in that cover. Let's take a look at this cover. What is going on in this cover? Load already. Well, while you load, I'll look over here. Mike says, have you got the Kino Spaghetti Western uh, Kino put out? Because what? Have you? Whoa, because they put out a lot. 
Oh, um, I don't know what I got. If, if I run into them, I'll let you know. But I, 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 I grab a, a lot under Spaghetti Westerns. Martin Sheen, Sam Waterston, Harvey Keitel. The West, the way it really was. Oh. Duel of the Sun. Duel of the Sun is a recommend from Mike. Okay. Interesting. I will remember that. Um, Scorpion releasing title here. Uh, mm, mm. Yeah. Maybe I'll come back to Duel in the Sun. Em oh, Emerald Forest. Oh, wow. I've never seen this, but I've heard good things about this. John Borman is just insane. What an uh, interesting director. Uh, 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 the Emerald Forest is an exotic. Let's, oh, here, let me read this. Here. Emerald Forest is an exotic and erotic nightmare replete with one lushly enraptured scene after another. Uh, for 10 years, Serge Chalice for his son who disappeared from the edge of the Brazilian Rainforest Magazine. He finds people living among the reclusive Amazon tribe who adopted him, and that's when Bill's adventure truly begins. For his son has grown into a man who moves skillfully through the terrain. Uh, um, oh, that's interesting. So it's... Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's a very, very interesting. It's a little different from what I thought. You know, I'll add it. I'll add it to the cart for now, but I'm currently at $42. I'm trying to keep it to 100 I know that's probably wishful thinking, but I'm trying to keep it down. Stalking Moon has a great soundtrack. Another Gregory Peck flick. Yes, I know that title. I haven't seen it, but I know which one you're talking about. Iger Sanction is really good. The Clint Eastwood uh, title. That's a really good film. Uh, and the An Eye for an Eye. Uh, what the fuck? I don't know this movie. Eye for an Eye, Chuck Norris. What is this? Uh, I don't know this one. Drug Lords and um, Christopher Lee is in this? What? Is Christopher Lee the bad guy? Oh, my God. I think it is. He goes beyond the law to seek vengeance against Christopher Lee. Well, uh, fine. That's a pretty good cast. I think I'll grab that. I think I'll grab that. Been wanting to see Emerald Forest for a while. It looks good. I haven't heard much about it. Uh, well, now's your time to grab it. Nine ninety nine is a pretty good deal. Uh, 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 Stanley Kubrick's Fear and Desire. Was this a lost film? I don't know this one. That's interesting. Uh, I'm probably lost because I'm not familiar with it. Eye for an Eye is pretty good. It's been years. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I, I look forward to that. The Flesh and the Fiends, um, this is not a Hammer film, but it's sort of in that same, you know, style. Buster Keaton, or is he? Buster Keaton, 100%. Grab anything and everything. Buster Keaton, it is, you, you're going to need it. Yeah, a film fan, film student, filmmaker, Buster Keaton, all these guys you'll learn so much from that you have to. You just have to. Um, you're going to have a damn good time with that. Absolutely a damn good time. Uh, it's a student film. Kubrick's. Okay. Well, well that's that's interesting. Uh, Eye for an Eye uh, is too good for the severance set. <laughs> yes, because uh, uh, <laughs> Christopher Lee is actually in it. Um, I also rec rec I also watched uh, Hunting Whaley House of the Night. And YouTube recommended it and had no idea you directed it until I researched it. Some, some great moments for sure. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's really hard to make. It's, it's really hard to make a movie. We had 12 days, less than a hundred thousand um, dollars. It's hard to make a movie under those circumstances. But you do what you do because you fucking love movies and. It's very different. It's very different being, oh, Grunt, the wrestling movie. That's a thing. It's very different being a film fan and just watching stuff and collecting these. But the work that goes into all of these is astounding and exhausting. Exhausting. Oh, my God. Yeah, exhausting. Um, but as a filmmaker, I feel that's why, like, unlike some reviewers, I can be very honest about a film because as a filmmaker, I know that I would appreciate that. If somebody said, oh, whatever, it sucks, it sucks. I get it. It didn't work for you. Not every movie works for everybody. But, um, 
it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I do. I, I'm, I'm glad you checked it out. I'm glad you checked it out, though. As an independent filmmaker myself, 100% know what you mean. Yeah, it uh, it's hard. It's it's hard, and it, and it breaks it down. Well, thank you, thank you, sir. And and, and you have mine as a, as a fellow filmmaker. It, it's 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 a hard going. And I'm actually going to have some news coming up pretty soon, hopefully, regarding my film career and the future of it. Christopher Lee is in some Jess Franco films. He is. And you know what's funny? I just watched Count Dracula, Jess Franco's Count Dracula. It's really good. It's a really goddamn good movie. And he's in that movie more than in any, uh, well, I don't say any, but in most of the Christopher Lee box set titles. So I don't know why that one wasn't included. Just, just for shits and giggles. I mean, they included um, Torture Chamber. This looks interesting. What a cast. Lee Marvin Toshiro Mifune. Another John Borman film. Two wartime enemies trapped along a deserted island. Oh, this is that. Oh, mm, mm, mm. I have seen this. I've seen this movie. It's okay. It's just another one of those real torturous type experiences. Um, which has obviously has its fans. But for me, for me, no. Jeremy Summers. It's a Spanish film. I don't think his name is really Jeremy Summers, but okay. Uh, American businessman are drawn to a kidnapping plot with their friend. Uh, House of One Thousand Dolls with Vincent Price. Uh, I'm gonna pass, but I, you know, if if I was struggling to buy stuff, I would grab that. I had a Lupino box set. That's a fantastic one of the one of the early. Oh shit! Sold last time. Is it? Yes. I'm gonna get you, sucker. One of the best goddamn comedies ever, goddamn made. That was sold out last time I tried to get it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get you. Movie. Um, uh, does that have two movies? Oh, it comes with the Rift Tracks edition. Oh, that's kind of neat. Comes with Rift Tracks commentary. That's kind of cool. This is a very strange movie. I don't have it. But with the Rift Tracks commentary, got six bucks? <laughs> Yeah. Shock money to goddamn Blu-ray. Why is it this and not on Blu-ray? Ah, that movie's so good. Uh, that movie's so damn good. Did I have lunch yet? No, I actually, I didn't. But I have a medical procedure in about an hour. Um, well, about an hour and a half. So I have to be fasting for it. I normally do fasting... I normally skip breakfast or eat really late in the day. Um, so I have not had lunch yet now. Uh, um, oh, yeah. There you go. He, Just Dave knows. I'm going to get you suck. It's one of the best movies ever made. Uh, Bloody Judge. I have that on DVD. I, it, I've seen it long ago. Long, long ago. Uh, Intolerance for 10 bucks. This is a masterpiece. It's a little, obviously, a little fucking dated. It's kind of racist, but um, but that that's a fun movie. And well, fun. Well, I'll call it a masterpiece, but it's not a fun movie because it's very racist. Okay, so Bumpy says I missed the hot spot. Hot spot. Dennis Hopper. Whoa, I'm sure I've seen this. I'm sure I have seen this. Exploding a series of sexual twists and passionate encounters. Shocking, uh, shocking reveals. Virginia Madsen, quick question, Bumpy, is, is, is she nude in the film? Because that would help me decide. Not to be indelicate, but you know. But yeah. Things help us like things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Uh, let's see. Ben Midler, Nathan Lane movie. No thanks. It's Pat, five ninety nine. No thanks. Is this the same director? No, okay. Uh, that would have been hilarious. Uh, da, 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 da. Nick Nolte playing Thomas Jefferson in a Merchants and Ivory movie. I'm, I'm good there. Yes, so is Jennifer Connelly. Well, uh, you had my curiosity, but now. You have my money. Uh, Hotspot added to cart. That's a bingo for me. 
She has quite a bit in her spot. So is Jennifer Colony. Hell yeah. All right. That's why I like that's why I like doing this live, because then you guys can fill me in on what has nudity and what doesn't. <laughs> I mean, that's not my only that's obviously not my only uh metric. Judgment in Nuremberg has no nudity. It's a good goddamn movie. Three hours. I watched this in film school. Uh, it's a real I mean it's a long movie, but it's really goddamn good. Amazing cast. Spencer Tracy, William Shatner, uh fucking Burt Lancaster, uh, Judy Garland. It's a good movie. It's a it's about um the the Nazis being put on trail on trial. Oh, fucking good. Ooh, Killdozer. Fuck yeah. I've been waiting for this to drop, and now I got it. I don't, I don't need to slip on that. Nine bucks. Kill Dozer, baby. Uh, moving in. Moving in, moving out. Uh, let's see. Lady Ice. Donald Sutherland again. In another Tom Grise movie, I believe. A sleek thriller set in the Windy City. Detective Andy Hammond. Uh, collaborates with an insurance company to investigate the theft of diamonds worth three million. Enter Paula Booth, uh, played by uh, Jennifer O'Neill, who deals in stolen goods. Hmm. I mean, this is a fucking cool cover, man. I don't know if it's gonna be good, but I like this cover. That clute guy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, that was a weird laugh. I I'm giddy. I like I like my movies. It makes me happy. Um. Nah, I think I'll pass on that. Uh, maybe next time. Legal Eagles, I really like this movie. Ivan Reitman. But it's one of those movies I enjoyed as a kid. I don't, I don't know that I, I would like to revisit it. Wait, hold on. It's called The Last Remake. Oh, okay, The Last Remake of Bo Jest. Directed, why does it say Feldman Marty? That's weird. It says it up here too. So it's not like he was using, he was just having fun with his name or something. It's a spoof to end all spoofs as a comedy legend, Marty Feldman. Remakes Bo Jest, set in England and Morocco. It's uh, the do or die extravaganza we've known and loved. Uh -uh -um. James Earl Jones is in it. That sounds fucking nuts. Hmm, anybody know about this? The last remake of Bojack. I'm going to add it, but I don't know. That might be him. I love Marty Feldman. He's one of the greats. Marty Feldman is a fantastic actor. Um, oh, Laughing Policeman. I kind of dig Walter Matthau in action roles. There's something about it. I think, he, I think it works. Eight people know who the killer is, and they're all dead. It's a tough beat for San Francisco Police Lieutenant Jake Martin. One he has to investigate uh, when he has to investigate a city bus massacre in which a madman opened machine gun fire and eight people. That sounds pretty badass. I'll grab that. I wouldn't grab that. Legal Eagles. Oh, I already talked about that. Uh, Life with Mikey. That's an interesting. What happened to the the? What's the name of the girl in this? Christina Vidal. Christina Vidal was it? Yeah. What would have happened to her? Um. Mm. Mm. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I'll pass on that. Uh, live like a cop, die like a man. Deodato's Polit uh, Shateki. I highly recommend that. That's a fucking good movie. Link. You know, I don't think I own that. I don't think I own that. Mm, but that is a good movie. I love Crazy Apes. I'll grab it. If anything, I'll just give it away to a Patreon. Patreon, Patreon. Uh, Mike says, did you say that you were going to get Wild Geese? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm grabbing that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sure I've seen it, but it's been a while. I was thinking about getting Link, but it didn't make my order. Gotcha. That happens. That happens. Bumpy, I did... Uh, watch Charlie Varick, and I have reviewed it. I've, I've reviewed it on one of my uh, physical media uh, review roundups. It's a good movie. I really enjoyed that film. Uh, 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 lovely Way to Die. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. A cast will sell me any fucking time. Look at this. Kirk Douglas, Eli Wallach. I love Eli Wallach. 
I mean, he's uh, Tuco is one of the great cinematic characters. Uh, a Lovely Way to Die stars um, Craig Douglas. Uh, uh, um, a hard boiled police detective who turns it in his badge after charges of brutality. Uh, hired by a prominent attorney, um, Schuler is assigned to protect Rita Westbrook, a beautiful young woman who's accused of murdering her wealthy husband while trying to uncover more information about the murder. Hmm. Oh, Ali McGraw is in this. That's kind of, you know what? Fuck it. I've never heard of it, but I love that cast. I love that cast. I'll throw, I'll throw down. Uh, there you go. Uh, Yes, I agree. It's probably his best, honestly. Um, such a good movie. Laughing Policeman was pretty good. Darker than I thought. Yeah, I, I kind of appreciate when he goes dark. I, I really do appreciate that. I think I think there's something really um, really special there. Da -da 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 -da, da -da -da, 4K UHD. I have it. I got that as a... I got, how the hell did I get that? I got that as a screener, but I don't know how. Somehow I didn't. Burt Reynolds, Malone. Oh, Man on Fire. I hear that's pretty dang good. Um, oh, wait. Is this a rem? Oh, wait. Is Hold on. Is Man on Fire a remake of Man on Fire? That might be the case. It is. It was remade by Denzel Washington. Oh, how interesting. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Kino Lober releases... Uh, it seemed like a mixed bag. Do they get all the Criterion leftovers? Probably, but you know what? It's a, it's not as mixed bag as Severin. I feel like um, they they they. I think they really put out movies that they know are good films, not just shit they can get their hands on. Which is something I could I could say about Vinegar Syndrome or Severin that they just oh we got we got access to the Dark Tower. Oh, but that's a shitty movie. Well, that's fine. We'll put a subcover on it and we'll sell it. Um, I think Kino. You know, genuinely puts out movies that they think are, are I mean probably vinegar does too. I'm not gonna I, I don't I like vinegar very much, but I think Kino genuinely puts out movies that are good films. Um which is something I can't say about a lot of other boutique labels. Have you seen Washing Machine? I have. Great nudity. Makes no sense. And I I really didn't like the twist on it. Um you know what? Give me a second. I have to go to the restroom, uh, this medical thing I'm doing, I have to drink a lot of water. But I'm not going to leave you with nothing. I'm going to do something real quick here. I'm not going to leave you on a blank screen. Come on. No, it's not working. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Do, 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 do. Ah, there you go. We'll watch a Severn commercial. How about that? That'll be fun. Get us ready for the sale. Hey. Like all films, there is the tree, the trunk that has to stabilize it. But I kind of find that I'm interested in these branches. And I'm running through these people, and people are screaming. And I don't know what to do, so I start saying like, coming through, naked man, sorry. I'm just trying to be like, this is fun. Nobody think that I'm a pervert. Yay! There's no reason to be frightened. See? Born for hell. Born for hell. There you go. I'm back. Um <laughs> That was that was Warwick Davis, absolutely. Uh, Kino is Criterion Junior. I think that's I think that's a good way to put it. That that's a a really good way to do it and do it. Off topic, but that Eddie Deason stuff is weird. Yes, we're going to be talking about Eddie Deason actually uh, towards the end of this. I'll, I'll I'll um. Oh man, yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, let's get back to the sale here. Um. Okay, what are we buying? What are we buying? What are we buying? Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
the mercenary. Wait, no, I have this. Do I have this? Franco Nero, Tony Musanti, uh, the mercenary, Sergio Corbucci. Fuck yeah. Even if I have it, I can. I'm sure I can do something with it. Um, spaghetti westerns, man. Fuck it. You know what? I'm grabbing Miracle Mile. I was waiting for like a good edition, like a super edition of this. It is. This is a great movie. I highly recommend it. Eh, Griff at the same time. Yes. I know. Uh, oh, is it getting a new scan soon? I don't know. Did you hear anything? I, I, I thought I was just going to languish here, but um, I'm already at 153, so I have to cut back. Moana. That's not the, the Moana, but uh, I think it was. Well, no, I guess. Well, I don't know. Actually, where the fuck did they get Moana from then? I don't know. Mill and Mr. Here, that's a really fun movie. Um, fucking Rick over. Oh, shit. Look who's in it. That's my buddy. Uh, my buddy was, uh, well, has an unfortunate um, situation going on uh, currently. Eddie Deason. Um, wild, wacky comedy tradition of Mad, 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 Mad World. This has a, has a lot of fun people in it, man. Rick Overton, uh, Rudy DeLuca. Uh, 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 I'll wait till it's. I'll wait till it's cheaper. I'll wait till it's cheaper. Apparently, Miracle Mile is getting a new 4K release, maybe even by Kino. Oh shit! Well, I'm gonna wait then. That's that's one of my favorite movies. That is a masterpiece. I thought it was Miracle Mile and Cherry 2000 getting new scans. Okay. Well, whatever. I, if, if there's a new release of it, I'm going to get it. Uh, Robbie says, Mercenary is a lot of fun. Miracle Mile is really good. Not really like anything else. Absolutely. Uh, Mike also vouches for Mercenary. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited then. I, I'll pull Miracle Mile from my list um, towards the end. Uh, and then we'll also talk... Um, we'll talk Eddie Deason. Meltdown Drama, which is... Uh, oh, man. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Is it 4K? I thought 4K scan on blue, but I could be wrong. You know what it needs? That's motherfucking perfect for a VSU, right? Stick string samurai. It, it, Miracle Mile, man. That's the one. That's the one, man. Anyway, Mr. Destiny is a pretty fun movie. I don't think I need to revisit it, but it's, it's a fun movie. Murder Rock. Lucha Fulci's uh, Murder Rock. I think I can wait for uh, $9 on that. That's the good thing about Kino. None of this shit goes out of print. Well, I'll make a couple things, but uh, there, there's a lot. There's a lot, and, and you'll be able to um, get it eventually. You don't have to... Uh, only this weekend, only exclusive you know, sale. Rush and get it. It's a shitty movie, but just get it real quick. We'll trick you into getting it. I hate that. I hate, I hate that very much, actually. The, na the nameless mentally ill man shall wander in the woods. Gianni Garco was awesome. Oh, it's an Italian film. Uh, it's a remake of The Word Lac. Uh, uh, oh, wow. The Night of the Devils. Oh, shit. That kind of sounds cool. I'll put it on my list, but I'm, I might pull it. 16 titles in the list. Oh, man. That's a lot. Mr. Destiny is one of your faves. It's such a good movie. Even when they go OOP, they give you time to get them before they're gone. That's right. While supplies last. Exactly. So I love that. I think that's great. Um, that's kind of why, That's kind of why you know, uh, I, I prefer these kind of labels that don't play those games, man. And their prices are always good. Nine bucks? You know, you won't see that from Vinegar Syndrome or Severin. Or Arrow, for that matter. Um, or Criterion, really. But Kino will give you a good deal. That's a good goddamn deal. Oh, look at this. What a cool cast. Oh, wow. Paul Bartell. I love Paul Bartell. David Naughton and Nancy Allen. Uh, um, um, hilarious comedy starring Nancy Allen and David Naughton. Uh, here we go. Tabloid reporter Lois Thorndike and her photographer Barry Denver stumble upon evidence of a sex scandal, blackmail, political conspiracy that may involve her lover Franklin, the saintly mayor of New York. Uh, 
classic 1980s sex comedy. Oh. Man, you know what? I like that cast. I like that director. I'm in. I'm in. I, I like finding little surprises like that. That's, oh, man. Cinema is, oh, man. I just can't describe it. There's nothing like it. And it's very different. It's very different from just being a film fan and watching it and being somebody who makes it. Uh, because you, under, you, 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 you see movies different. You'll never see a movie the same way again. Absolutely never. From Jacques Duray, the legendary director of The Swimming Pool, which I did not – actually, no, that's The Swimmer. The Swimming Pool is the one that Criterion's putting out right now. Uh, what is this movie about? A rogue French detective infiltrating a network of drug traffickers with their crime boss. Um, Henry Silva's in this. Oh, wow. Checky Car Cario. How old is this? 83. Hmm. No, I'm passing that, but it's uh, it, it's it's possible. The Alex Cox commentary on the Kino westerns are the best. He is such a fan. I read his book on westerns, and it is. I mean, that's what I was getting when I, when I realized spaghetti westerns were really my jam. I read his book, and he is such a fan. He is amazing. I'm I'm actually I'm reaching out to Alex Cox. I'm gonna try and get him on the show. Um, um actually, you know what? For the people that are here, you're gonna get some information. I just booked Troy Howarth and uh, Nathaniel Thompson, who are in tons and tons and tons of commentary tracks together, actually. I booked them, but they're going to be on separate shows, sharing the love of cinema with you and I um, uh, on, uh, in July. So Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson, they're going to be on with us. Just to, If you guys enjoyed the, uh, the Tim Lucas uh, interview, this is going to be just like that. I'm very excited for that. Eternal Melancholy, do not worry, my friend. You're welcome. You're welcome to hang uh, at any time. Uh, John says, my very commentary team. Yeah, they're awesome, man. I they never stop. They never stop. I love it. Uh, really nice guys and just confirmed today that they're on board. Holy fuck, my – what the hell? <sighs> See, this is why you never pay full price. Rawhead Rags limited edition steelbook, nine dollars. This was originally forty bucks when it first came out. This was forty bucks on Amazon. I didn't. I bought it at twenty bucks, and I thought that that was a deal. Nine dollars. Get that shit. Get it. You're gonna like that movie. What the hell? <sighs> Nothing holds value except slipcovers. Strangest thing. Uh, Val guests the Quatermass experiment. I just got Quatermass in the pit, right? Yeah, I gotta get this. I've been waiting for that. I like those movies very much. The Quatermass films are so good. All right, everybody's excited for uh, uh, Nathaniel and Troy joining us. Yes, that will be uh, in July, um, I believe. Actually, next weekend. Next weekend, uh, Troy will be on. Next Friday. Trey will be on, and then Nathaniel two weeks later. Um, so that'll be that'll be fucking cool. Uh, stay tuned for information on that. Real Men is a classic movie. I love Real Men. That's a really fun comedy from my childhood days. I remember that very fondly. Da -da 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 -da. Runaway Train is good. Running Scared is a really great movie. Um, Schoolgirls in Chains. Isn't somebody putting this out? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Well, that's a good price, though. I think that's a uh, code red. That might be a code red. I think it's a code red. I don't know if it says it here. Thought it was a code red re-release. Schoolgirls. Uh, if you guys know, let me know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Shoot first, die later. I love Fernando De Leo. His stuff is so good. I believe that's a uh, Policiatechi. Gregory Peck, shoot out. And showdown. Uh, opposite sides of the law, maybe. Silent Partner. I didn't know they had this. That's a fun movie. It's a very interesting crime thriller slash Christmas movie. It's a Christmas movie. Slaughter Hotel. Heads up on this movie. It has nudity up the wazoo. As a matter of fact, there's insert shots of wazoo's. So yeah. 
Um, it's a good movie though. It's kind of it's a very super sexy slasher movie. It was from Neri. Oh my god, beautiful, amazing. Uh, I recommend Slaughter Hotel. That is a, that is a ton of fun. The spe oh look at this one. I don't have this one. The Specialists. Uh, 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 Sergio Corbucci. I don't have it. I'm gonna grab it. I don't. I don't know the cast, but I'll grab it anyway. Been wanting to check out Real Man Running Scared. is really fun. Real Man is really good. It's a very. It's a very interesting movie. It takes a weird turn, but it's a, uh, the ending is cool. It's, it's a fun movie. Yes, that's it. Uh, that's the book. Yeah, so great. Highly recommend that. Mike also vouches for Slaughter Hotel. And video store review movies from my channel will always be special regardless of quality. Scorsese had the red shoes. Um, and I had She Devil. She Devil's good. That's a, that's a fun movie. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes uh, the movies that hit us, the movies that make us movie fans, are very different from what uh, most people would consider good movies. Um, I, I'm, I'm of the school of Jaws, but everybody likes Jaws. But It's a Wonderful Life, that's one of my favorite films. But even, even things like Tank, I love Tank. I used to watch this movie every Saturday for some reason. Well, not every Saturday, but you know, for the most part, plenty. I watch this movie plenty, is this essentially what I'm saying here. I like that movie, that's a really good movie. Uh, Teen Witch, yeah, it's silly, but it's a fun, it's a fun little uh, kind of Halloweeny movie. Uh, uh, um, Ten Little Indians is that the original? No, that's like a remake set in Africa. Okay. Um, cool. Why the hell are there so many people jumping off that boat? How the hell is that possible? Um, illegal rescue of immigrant boat people okay that's not what i thought it was i thought it was gonna like <laughs> spring break sexy movie it's not really not it's not that at all tintorera that's a renee cardona jr movie not a good movie i haven't even seen that box set yet tough guys is really fun uh kirk douglas burt lancaster kind of a comedy how many pages is this okay we're almost at the end oh shit my Bodyguard. I remember that movie. Yeah. That's a good movie. It's about a high school kid, right? Who hires like a bully or something. If you could screen one film from the King Level Collection to us all right now, which one would it be? Oh, man. That is uh, a good question. I don't know. Let me think on that. Let me think on that. Wild Geese 2 is here. I'm getting Wild Geese 1. Barbara Carrera, beautiful Barbara Carrera. Nah, I think I'll pass on that. Last page. Last page, and then we'll talk Eddie Deason. Oh, my God. Crazy stuff. Okay, man, eh, nothing here. No, I've already got the Fritz Lang. I love Fritz Lang. Yeah, okay, let me look. Oh, God, it's like 200. Or maybe you know I okay fine I uh, here's your answer uh, uh, um, uh, video store I would screen Shockma Shockma is a freaking great movie so so good uh, Shockma it's only on DVD but um, if it's on YouTube it doesn't really matter so Shockma for sure. Yeah, I used to watch Tank all the time, but man, it sucks watching as an adult. Oh, I'm sure. That's why I can never revisit movies, man. I could just never revisit. King Lamar has released two of, my, two of my films in the past. Two of your films? Oh, wow. That's awesome, man. That's fantastic. Uh, Mike Baird, cult movies are the best. So many different genres. Absolutely. Uh, they, they absolutely stand head and shoulders above other kinds of cinema because they are defined by the status of cult. Um, let's take a look at this. This is my list. Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. I, I think I'm going to hang on to that because I've been putting that out of my cart for, for decades. Well, not decades. Uh, a year. Uh, two years. Uh, Des uh, After the Fox. That sounds really great with Peter Sells. I'm going to grab keep that. Destiny 3D. I think I'm going to hold on to that one. 
Uh, I hear I hear good things about that. Or I could wait till it's nine ninety nine. Uh, Emerald Forest. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna dump because it sounds like it might be kind of a, a an unpleasant watch. Eye for an eye with Christopher Lee. I'm gonna hold on to it for right now, but it may not stand the test of time when I go through the list again. I'm gonna get you sucker. I'm holding on to that because that sold out. Incredible Twitter transplant with Rip Tracks commentary. It's so cheap. I might as well. Hotspot has, from what anyone tells me, a fantastic nudity, so that's staying in there, 100%. Kill Dozer, I've been waiting for. The last remake of Bo Jest. I think I'm going to dump this one. I'll come back to you one day, Marty. A Laughing Policeman is like right up my alley. Link, I really like. A Lovely Way to Die. I think I'm going to dump that one. Uh, let me see here real quick. $200 on movies isn't bad at all. They spend way more on making them. Absolutely, but I have to justify it to my wife that I'm spending $200 uh, on movies. Um, <laughs> um, uh, he says, uh, Christmas Blood and The House. Hey, that's fantastic. Well, hey, guys, check those out. I, I'll, look, I'll, I'll look them up right now, actually. Uh, Barrett, welcome. Emerald Force is fantastic. Uh, I'm sure it is. Um, I'm sure it is, but I, I just I need to trim down. Good to follow your channel, so I know about all the sales. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's what I do, man. That's what I do. I help I help you guys save money. Miracle Mile, I'm I'm yanking because everyone says it's coming out a new version. Hopefully, uh, Night of the Devils. Johnny Garco is good, but I think I'm gonna yank it. Uh, laughing. Okay, what are we got? Mercenary. I'm gonna keep. Not for publication. Sounds really good. And the specialists sound really good. But I don't love the cast. So maybe I'll come back to that one. You know what? I, mm, I I'm gonna pull Chuck Norris. I know this might be blasphemy, but I do not don't like Chuck Norris. Sue me. I I just do not like Chuck Norris, man. Specialists. I'm gonna dump. I'll come back to that. 120 bucks, 12 titles. God, I just don't have time for this shit, though. I just don't have time. Well, okay, I will have more time when I start doing daily videos, but um, I got to I gotta pull at least two more. Any suggestions what I should pull? Let me know. Uh, I'm curious what you guys think. If there's anything I should probably cut out. MC, have you seen a 1996 Canadian TV show called The Adventures of Shirley Holmes? I used to watch it when I was younger. I think the series is on YouTube. I don't know it. Like a female Sherlock Holmes or like the sister? I don't know it. Um, it sounds interesting. Um, any any suggestions as to what I should cut? Right now I'm leaning on uh, keeping mercenaries. Gosh. Uh, you know what? I'll come back to it. Why don't we do that? I'll come back to this. Uh, I'll, I'll, let my, I'll, I'll let my head sort of sit um, sit there. A video store says, 4K Remaster of Miracle Mile is due for release early next year. The current transfer is really dull, too, and hopefully has a better sound to Tangerine Dream score. That's right. Yeah, hopefully. Quint, welcome. Uh, my movies, um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, mm, you know what? Just for you guys, since you're in here. I'll do this real quick. I will. Superman doesn't like to reveal his secret identity. Uh, I don't care either way, but it's sort of a thing where um, um, because I'm in the industry, I, I keep my thoughts separate from um, my industry contacts, if, that's, if, that means, if that makes any sense. So I would say stuff like, oh, I'm a, you know, um, uh, if I didn't like your movie, that wasn't me. That was Master Chaos. So that's kind of what I've done in the past. I'll show you. Mm, I had to stop sharing the other page, so I don't want to do that. I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. 
Uh, any suggestions as to what I can cut out of this, uh, guys? I'm curious what you think. She's a long lost relative of Sherlock Holmes. She's a kid who solves mysteries. Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stop sharing this for a minute, and then I'll, since you guys are curious, I will show you um, my filmography real quick. Does that come up? Um, that's my filmography. Um, the Legend of La Llorona is a, a script I wrote fucking four years ago, and uh, it's now, four, no, three years ago, but it's finally coming out at the end of this year. Unspeakable Horrors of Plan 9 Conspiracy is available on Amazon Prime, or it should be there for free. If you want to check that out, it's a mockumentary. Blood Brothers is uh, one that went theatrical. I was very happy about that. I, got, I finally got a movie in theaters, which is kind of insane. Um, Hansel and Gretel. You know what? This is my written. Let's look at director credits because it's if it's director credits, then it's both. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, so these are all the films I've made, starting with Monster Man in 2001. That one's hard to find. Uh, Corpses Are Forever is also hard to find. I do have a ton of them. I might be, you know, doing giveaways or I was thinking of doing a blind box with some of my stuff. You know, obviously, and some of my screener titles. I have a ton of screeners that I'm not going to hang on to, like Blu-rays and stuff. Uh, Nanny Land was a pilot. Uh, the Haunting of Whaley House um, was a, is, is a feature I'm very proud of. I'm, pr I'm, I'm proud of all my features. They're difficult to make. Um, I'm proud of them for different reasons, and, and there's different history with every movie, um, good or bad. It, it just happens. Uh, Blood Brothers up here is one I'm really happy about. Um, I'm really proud of this movie, but uh, a, a tumultuous post-production. And then uh, Unspeakable Horrors was my last film. It's a mockumentary documentary that is available on Amazon Prime. Um, so there you go. That's <laughs> that's that that's me. Let's go back to let's go back to Kino, and then and then we'll talk. And then we'll end it up with. Uh, the, the ridiculousness that is um, the, the Eddie Deason situation. I never liked the hotspot, but I know so many people love that film. I tried watching it probably five times. Maybe it's just a culture thing. Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, I'm getting it for the nudity, but uh, most likely it's a culture thing. Okay, so um, you know what? I'm going to let this sit. Let me look up uh, Gizmo's movies here real quick. Christmas Blood. Let's look that up. How do I go to shop and we'll just search? Oh, career opportunities, but that's not on sale. Ah, oh, fourteen ninety-seven. That just came out. Speaking of Jennifer Connelly, beautiful Jennifer Connelly there. Um, Christmas blood. Go, oh, Christmas blood. There it is. Nice, look at that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can we, can we buy it. It's on DVD for eleven sixty nine. Uh, horrors sent a slasher subgenre mixes with Scandinavian noir and his bloody Xmas tale. Christmas is a time of peace, love, and family, but not for Norway. As a psychopath dressed in a Santa Claus suit has been terrorizing them for the past thirteen years. For as long as the Caroline starts, uh, for as soon as the Caroline starts, this demented Chris Kringle. Dispenses bloody axe blows, regardless of whether you've been good or bad. Look at that. Uh, from uh, Gizmo himself. Reinhardt, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Reinhardt Keeley? Keeley? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm butchering that, my friend. Um, that is fantastic, man. Look at that, guys. Uh, in the chat, we have a, we have a, a, another another director here. A distributed director, which that's hard to find. Christmas Blood, and then The House. I wonder if I can click on your name. There we go. The House. I've seen this cover. I've seen this cover. I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen this cover. Shop. Uh, it is on, D on DVD. 749. Uh, uh, um, two German soldiers are escorting a Norwegian soldier and a prisoner of war, but the Scandinavian winter takes quite a toll on them. Nearly frozen Nazi officer... Uh, Kreiner and German soldier Fleiss discover an empty house near the forest. It's probably not a good place because it turns out to be much more sinister and deadly than they thought. Mm. Yeah, that sounds really awesome too, actually. 
Well, that's a good shot. Uh, fantastic, man. Congratulations on that. Being distributed is almost half the battle in making a movie. So, my God. Um, off topic, um, but I'm hearing Blood Blood Nasty is probably one of the July Vincent titles. What the hell is Blood Nasty? Let's look that up. Blood Nasty? Blood Nasty. Blood Nasty. Okay, um, this is what I found. Uh, that's you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna uh, I'll pick and choose, but I think I'm I think I'm gonna get rid of I think I'm gonna get rid of After the Fox and the other one. What the fudge is it? Probably not for publication, just to save money, just to save money. Is uh, Papa having family? Um, let's find Blood Nasty. Am I missing things? I don't want to miss. Let me make sure I don't miss anything here. Uh, stop screen, and we're going to share Blood Nasty. Look at this shit. Blood Nasty from 1989. Where does your information come from, uh, Griff? Griff says uh, he's heard this is coming for July. Hmm. I don't know it. Roy is killed by a couple of jewel thieves and then brought back to life and possessed by a deceased serial killer known as Blade. He returns home and his mother is not very happy to see him. <laughs> uh, wow, what a description. She's not happy to see him and she wants to collect his life insurance policy. Soon things uh, get out of hand. His mom is trying to make sure nobody knows that Roy has come back and Blade is trying to let everybody know that he has come back. I mean, it sounds like a vinegar syndrome title. Richard Gabay. How do I know that name? That name sounds familiar. Uh, two directors. Uh, Mark, come on. Is this like a, it's like a ger Russian, Russian poster? Who's in it? Uh, Richard Gabay is in it. Wait, I know him. How do I know him? How do I know him? I know that guy from something. What is that guy from? What is he from? I know I'm going on a I'm going on a fucking wild goose chase and I'm running out of time, but Richard, okay. Blood Nasty. Well that's potentially true. Linnea Quigley's in it, so why not? Um sure. Blood Nasty. Um I believe you. I believe you. Looks like a fun watch. Uh, Barrett says, on the hospital, I think it's Dennis Hopper's direction that sort of weakens the film. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. A hotspot is a good modern-day noir for the 90s. Uh, video says, I've only made shorts, so I haven't had any distribution, but I do have a video essay on the second site, Lake Mungo release, to make up for it. Oh, you do? That's awesome, man. Wow, that's cool. I'll be honest, I'm not a giant fan of Lake Mungo, but that's fantastic getting on a Getting a special feature. That's fantastic, dude. Uh, that is fantastic. Quinn says, oh, thank you. I love, I love your passion for film. I, I appreciate you sharing sharing your passion with us, man. Uh, if we don't have, look, if we don't, if we don't care, if we don't care about this, then there is nothing. You know what? Uh, as a filmmaker, you guys are, are the reason we do this. Because we're crazy enough to, to open our hearts and show the world what's in our what's in our mind what's in our hearts and our brains and we spill it out into the world and we say hey um look at me look at me world and it's tough and a lot of people get torn down uh because of it um but you learn to have a, you have you learn to have a thick skin and it's made i think it's made me a better critic being a filmmaker honestly but thank you for saying that uh, quint after the Fox is okay, but should have been stronger considering the cast. Okay, thank you, Barrett. Well, that cinches it. It is out. It is out. Um, that helps. Okay, 110, 110. We're almost there. Uh, hey, man, thanks for reading the information. It is old, uh, old tools for sure, but they have taken so many years out of my life. So I feel like, oh, absolutely. Every movie you make is, a, is your baby. Absolutely. Every movie you make. 100%, man. 
um, and, and congratulations um, having having two beautiful babies. Uh, that's fantastic. John, people assume blood nasty because Brad Henderson logged it on his letterbox. Oh, interesting. But don't you think he would have, did he log it recently? Because if it was coming out of July, that shit would be logged already. But he didn't watch Donnie's Bar Mitzvah because he just posted on Twitter that he had watched it. So, he, so I'm guessing he doesn't watch all that stuff. He doesn't do the special features for that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Blood Nasty. Okay, before we call it a day, I do want to. I do want to address something that just dropped, and it's pretty awful. I've been. I've been teasing it the whole time. So let me do that now. Um, Eddie Deason. Uh, shot his career in the foot. Not that he had much of a career to begin with right now, unfortunately. But um, this is what's happening. Let me get this over here, and then we'll all read it together because it's pretty shocking. It's pretty awful. Uh, oh, gosh, is it awful. Um, oh, man. Okay. Kind of hurts my heart. Uh, by the way, everybody watching, do me a favor. Uh, drop a thumbs up on this because that helps the, uh, the whole algorithms thing. It's, it's cheesy, I know, but just give me a thumbs up. That really helps. Keeps the channel alive. Tells YouTube this is where the party is at. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,500 subs by July 5th. If I do that, we're going to be doing a uh, – uh, uh, not all night. Well, technically all night, a 12-hour movie marathon. Um, uh, a 12-hour movie marathon on this channel. Um, you should show your films. I would. Uh, unless somebody put it on YouTube. Somebody might have put it on YouTube. I, I honestly just grab whatever's on YouTube because I can't digitize my movies. Uh, there's actually one I could show. It's hard to watch your own movies, to be honest. I, I really have I have difficulty watching my own movies. Because um, I've been through so much and I've seen it so many times that it's, it's hard to revisit. Anyway. Um, Eddie Deason is a fucking creep who comes into my work at least once a week, calls and asks other servers for my schedule. And if he comes in and I'm not wearing makeup, he leaves. And this grown ass old man has the balls to post this on Facebook about me. I'm losing my mind. Wow. Let's read what she's saying. Okay. So this is from Eddie. Hold on to your butts. This is from Eddie. <sighs> uh, yeah. This is the, 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 he put this on Facebook, so try to hear it in his voice. I'm not going to do the voice. Okay, please give me your honest opinion on what I should do now. This is a rather long post, but please bear with it if you can. This happened a few days ago. Okay, I would go to this local restaurant every Wednesday like clockwork. He always writes in, in caps for some reason. Um, I have been going there every Wednesday for lunch for the past few months. There's a very nice waitress who works there. She is very sweet and kind, fun to talk to. However... This girl would wear these long false eyelashes, and she looked incredibly beautiful and sexy with them on. Okay. This knockout girl would serve me my food. We would just chat a bit. I would leave her a $20 tip every week like clockwork if this happened. I would always leave her a little note every week telling her she was beautiful and thanking her for being such a great waitress. Yes, I liked to look at her. She was beautiful, but I never touched her, insulted her, or said anything crude or rude. Nothing like that ever happened. Okay. Part two. It gets worse. Okay. 12 days ago, I go in and she wasn't there. It was a family emergency or some such thing. Okay. I understood that. I said I would be back on Friday. I came in on Friday. She was not wearing the long false eyelashes. Okay. I said I was going to come back on Sunday. I did. I came back on Sunday. Again, she was not wearing the false eyelashes. Last Wednesday, I did not go in. The fun spell was over. Now, a few months ago, I had had her as my waitress for the first time, and she was wearing the false eyelashes. I loved that she looked so amazing. I left her a twenty-dollar tip. I came in. <laughs> I came in again, and she wasn't wearing them. I was honest. I told her how nice she was, but I liked her wearing the long fake eyelashes. I went back the next day, and she was wearing them. She was 100% aware that I loved looking at her in the false eyelashes, and she always would wear them on Wednesdays. That became our day. I did not, as I said, go in last Wednesday. What is everyone thinking so far? Um, this guy sounds really, really odd. <laughs> sounds like a film noir. 
Uh, this is this is of course Eddie Deason, the star of Surf Two. He's been on the show. We've had him on Holly Weird. Um, and uh, uh, this is this is sad. This is sad. This is this is kind of um, depressing. There's more to this, by the way. Eddie is perfect on a wages hardcore. After reading all this and his other posts, I feel like he has gotten too close to the people in his town and should probably move away. Yes. And he's like, wow, this sounds mad. Yeah, it, uh, we're not done yet. There's two more pages. Now, what happened here? Am I a sexist? I liked looking at her with the long eyelashes. Is that really so awful? So mean? So sexist? Yeah, kind of. It is. Why? Okay, for any woman. Let's say you were in a restaurant and there was a waiter who looked like Brad Pitt uh, or George Clooney or Ryan Gosling. You would go in to eat, chat, and get some eye candy, right? Um, I mean, I guess he's not wrong. Uh, so you go in there regularly and eat, right? It's pleasant checking out this gorgeous guy. Now, let's say the same waiter came out one day looking slovenly, unkempt, dirty looking. You would be dis disappointed, right? How exactly is this any different than my situation? Because she wasn't dirty looking, dude. She wasn't wearing fucking long eyelashes. Who is this? Oh, my God. Who is this, dude? Um. Well, <laughs> Eternal says, uh, so far I just don't think he understands that she's there to work, not to look beautiful to him. Absolutely. She, yeah, right. She's not getting paid to, to look sexy for Eddie Deason. What the hell? Um, how exactly is this any different than my situation? We've already ag agreed that you're crazy. I do believe we are spirits, and I do not like to objectify people, but that's what you're doing uh, here. That said, I think there is a uh, time and place for everything, and I believe every once in a while, men or women can just look at a member of uh, here we go, the opposite sex and as a sexual being. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I would be, I would be really worried if I were her. That's that seems very stalkery. I mean, he's he's from what I understand, he's very much a. He's very much a wimpy dude. I don't think he's actually going to try anything, but Jesus. Um, where, where was it? This one. Even if you do this in real life, you can't say it to the person on social media. Absolutely. Yeah, this is like the crazy shit people keep to themselves, man. What the fuck? This seems sort of creepy. Repeating, praising her. And, oh, it's so bad. It, it's so bad. I'm glad I didn't buy Surf 2. Sorry, VS. Yeah, I'm glad. I, I, I don't feel so bad about hating on it now. Uh, it's, it's shit, man. David Lynch is filming. Go hang out. <laughs> uh, that's that's uh, yeah, exactly. Should have kept his thoughts to himself. Oh my god, absolutely. Uh, sounds like he's getting waitress and strippers confused. Ah, uh, I'll tell you, man, it's insane. All right, so, so this is the end of it. I know this seems to contradict what I just said. Um, I do not want her to feel like an object. I did always make it a point to also tell her what a nice person she was and what a nice personality she had. Uh, do you think what I did was weird or strange? Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, well, yeah, well, talking about it, yes. But, you know, telling her she's pretty, I, that's fine. But but telling her you have to wear these eyelashes or I will not fucking eat here is strange, bro. That's strange, Eddie. Um, also, I'm not going back there. Do I owe her a note, a letter of explanation, or should I just end it off? End it off? She is a waitress. You're not dating. Why would you give her a letter? Don't know. Don't send her a letter of explanation. That's no, man. What? Oh. And by the way, Eddie's not married. I don't think he's ever been married. Uh, and I, I think he's still a virgin. To be uh, be 100 honest with you, I think he's. I mean, I can't say for sure. Allegedly, I think he's still a virgin. I'll say that. Um. Yeah. Um, just the way he talks. I don't know. I get a vibe. Anyway, she is, as I say, a kind person. I do not wish to hurt her in any way. Well, you're kind of hurting her now, pal. Uh, one last question to women. Do those fake eyelashes hurt to wear? Do they hurt your eyes to wear them? I am trying to figure out why she doesn't just wear them all the time. I'm fucking Eddie Deason. You wear those eyelashes. She is an absolute knockout with them. Without them, I fucking hate her face. Uh, object, object, blah, blah, blah. Objectify her? Well, why the devil does any woman put on makeup and try to look pretty every morning? 
why is the makeup industry and then like it cuts off there she doesn't um uh oh here we go i think it's gonna have uh okay so this is another part as my female friend once told me who do you think uh who do you think women get all dressed up and made up for every day to look pretty for other women no it's to look nice for men mainly paraphrased but this is essentially what she told me i know as a guy i couldn't care less how i look for men <laughs> but i like to look at least presentable for women you can call me names or say i'm sexist or whatever the above post is 100 percent true i am honestly wondering what happened uh, to ruin the nice weekly lunch I would enjoy. Megan, you were a fucking freak, dude. I do think, uh, and do you think it is actually good this all just ended? Any honest opinions are appreciated. It didn't end. You weren't dating this woman, man. And then it just goes on and on. Um, oh, wait, so there's another one. Oh, here's, oh, my God. This does not end. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, I'm just going to check out everybody here real quick. Apparently, his movie characters aren't far off. He must like eyelashes. That's that's his kink, I guess. Yeah. So nothing he did was strange, yet he's not going back? Yeah, I think he's just pissed off that she's not wearing it. He needs to just buy a pack of false eyelashes. and, and Yeah, and like a, like a rubber doll. He just seems like he needs help, but I don't think it's a social thing. So sad he's putting stuff like that on Facebook. Absolutely, man. It's, it hurts him so bad. I still like it. He needs an a, he needs an adult to tell him what's what he's doing wrong and it has to grow up, which is a shame because he's in his sixties. I think you should talk to someone knowledgeable about social cues and social interactions. A hundred percent. Well, you know what? I love you guys. You guys are so smart, very good, um, very intelligent and, and loving responses. I like that very much. You guys are awesome. This is what he put. I think about the the, the tweet. So this might get worse. To all my Facebook friends and pals, okay, I'm sure all of you have heard about my recent encounter with a sweet, innocent waitress who is supposedly traumatized. Well, it turns out this girl is not so sweet or innocent. She is an intention whore. <laughs> she is a small-time, oh, God, no, 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 no. She is a small-time, small-town, lonely girl who is desperately craving attention. She has been spreading nasty, vile rumors about me here in my hometown of Cumberland, Maryland. Thanks for telling us where you live, pal. And here on Facebook, she actually spread as rumors. I used the N word. Incredible. I would never and have never used this vile word. She and her friends, her cronies, have sent me vile uh, PMs. Uh, I have been called a child molester, a psycho nut job, and much worse by her cronies. To Oh, God. Two of her cronies uh, are named Aaron Miller and D. Spiker. Oh, wow. So he's naming these people as well. He didn't name her, which at least there's that. Um, is that it? Uh, I hope. Uh, 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 this is another one? There's another one. Well, this is a rabbit hole. This is a motherfucking rabbit hole. This is another one. Uh, my brother and I go to this local takeout joint every morning to get breakfast. Uh, we get mom her poached eggs and toast. I will always get my daily cup of hot chocolate. Daily cup of hot chocolate. This fucking guy's a virgin. I I love him, but man, uh, this yeah yeah absolutely right. You guys, he needs some mental help. Uh, this joint has all these hot twenty year old college girls working there. I mean, these girls are knockouts, beautiful girls. Anyway, I order my breakfast. It comes to like six dollars or seven dollars, and I give her a ten and tell her to keep the change. Then I said, "You guys sure are pretty," meaning the girls there. Dead silence. Who runs this place? Hugh Hefner? Wow, man. That, uh, it just, uh, it just, uh, oh gosh. You know what? Th you know what? That's it. I'm not going to go further into it. You guys can go down the rabbit hole if you wish. Looks like this is only the beginning of this. Uh, it's it's really, it's really awful. Uh, Quinn says, "I would love to see a tour of your movie rooms." Uh, yeah, maybe one day I I, I could do that. Uh, one day, physically in his six, but mentally he's twelve. Absolutely correct. Uh, yikes! Could not have put it better myself. Uh, you are in a rabbit hole, Master C. Absolutely, I had to dig my way out. Um, uh, weren't you supposed to hang out with him at some point? 
Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that now. Uh, <laughs> he's coming to a convention here in August. Um, I, I think I'm going to skip that one. Uh, cringe. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to end the show on a positive note, Fred Rags is a new Chucky collection. That's right. I just bought that shit, man. Uh, I just bought that. Uh, it's good, good stuff. Is he doing a bit here? I really hope, I really hope he, no, I, I think he's, I think he's mentally disturbed, unfortunately. This is a remake of As Good As It Gets We Need To See. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Eddie Deason is uh, mentally disturbed. He said he's getting banned at restaurants in his area. Guess he'll have to get DoorDash from now on. I Maybe, yeah, absolutely. Oh, how sad, how sad. Anyway, this is supposed to be the keynote sale. Guys, I had to jump off. I have a medical appointment to deal with. And uh, let's go look at the, uh, where the hell is it? I have to look over my camera because it's right in front of me. Let's, let's take a look at uh, Kino sale one more time. Oh, man. That's what my cart looks like. Uh, you know, you know, I like Link, but I've never, but I've seen it so many times. I think I'm going to kill my darlings here. Am I at a good price? $100. $100. 10 items. I'm good. I'm done. That's my sale. I might come back and buy some more shit. down Because it, it, this lasts until July 4th. So I might do a second look around. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, uh, Barrett, thank you. And I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's um, getting X-rays done, but they have to inject. They have to put an IV of fucking solution, some kind of radiation solution into my veins. I'm not happy about that whatsoever. Um, I hope it's not a serious thing, but uh, I'll keep you posted as always. Uh, my friends, thank you so much for joining me. What what a pleasure. What a joy. What what a fun ass time I've had with you guys here shopping, Kino Sale, talking Eddie Deason. Tomorrow is the big dance. It is the seven sale. Starts uh Thursday into Friday midnight. So I will be here at 8:30 p.m. live at 8:30 p.m. PST, 11:30 EST to cover the sale. I hope you join me for that. We'll be going maybe four hours. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like we did with the vinegar syndrome cells. So that'll be fun. Uh, we'll be doing that live before that. I'm going to be on Aaron pins, uh, uh, channel, Mr. Cult of cinema. I'm going to be there with Logan toxic, uh, talking Severin as well. So I hope you'll join me over there on Aaron's channel uh, for that. Everybody. Thank you for your, for the well wishes. Uh, it sucks getting old. That's all I'll say. It sucks. Um, sending you lots of love. You guys, make the world a better place in my mind. And I'm, I'm thrilled and honored to have you guys here with me. It really means the world to me. You have no idea uh, until we meet again, which will be tomorrow. Uh, I hope, or, you know, you can watch plenty of videos. I got plenty of stuff here. If you haven't seen any, uh, a lot of my foot, a, a lot of my stuff, I've been at it for a year. So there's a plenty to enjoy uh, for now. I bid you adieu. I love you very much. Remember that as a matter of fact, I love you just the way you are. Keep being you, and I'll see you soon.